in play. Handicap chase racing over three miles and half a furlong. They've got 19 to be jumped, heading towards the first, and the composer ridden handily at the first, and there's a mistake at the back by Trisman's Glory, who was very, very untidy as they head towards the open ditch. First time round for them, fence number two, and good leap on the outside on the pink jacket by Bought Before Lunch, who has won here previously, going on from the composer in second place. Then comes Fact of the Matter, then Ligon Rock in the yellow and red silks, followed by Compadre and Trisman's Glory, who was better at the second, having certainly made a mess of the first as they make their way around the turn and head towards the home straight for the first time, heading towards fences three, four and five, all playing fences down the home straight. So bought before lunch up on the rail with the composer having just his second start over fences today. The John Joe Neal team bidding for a quick fire double on the card. Fact of the matter is in third place. Then comes Ligon Rock for the Henry Daly team as they clear fence number three. Compadre just in front of Tribesman's Glory as they race towards fence number four. So bought before lunch looking for a third victory today comes towards it and met it nicely from the composer in second position but only half a length between them. About four lengths back to fact of the matter, then comes Ligon Rock, Compadre and Tribesman's Glory as they race over the next plane fence. That was fence number five. Compadre a little bit sluggish in fifth position. Still two circuits to go in this Western Park Cancer Charity Handicap Chase. And it's the composer on the outside of Bought Before Lunch. They have a lead of around six lengths over fact of the matter and Ligon Rock who comes next. Compadre and Tribesman's Glory still Ridden with restraint, right up in trip today for Jonathan Burke and Tom George as they take a left-handed turn towards the back straight and the field stretched out by 10 lengths. So bought before lunch on the inside of the composer. They lead by about five lengths to fact of the matter. Then comes Ligon Rock. Then in behind Ligon Rock is Compadre and Tribesman's Glory as they head down the far side where they've got four fences down this part of the track. Heading towards the next, bought before lunch on the inside of the composer. The composer there was very, very quick and nimble and was much Market faster through the air in before play. before lunch. Then in behind is Fact of the Matter on the inside of Ligon Rock and Padre out slightly wider. Then comes Tri And met it well from bought before lunch in second place then comes fact of the matter in third the 11 year old followed by Ligon Rock and Tom O'Brien then comes Trisman's Glory in behind with Compadre they're all still in touch as they race to what will be the final fence in the circuit's time this is fence number 12 so the composer we've bought before lunch now about a length and a half between them the composer again meets it nicely bought before lunch mistake this time by Ligon Rock who lost a couple of lengths there and lost the place as Compadre out jumped him as they race past now with a circuit to go. So just under a mile left to go and in front we have the composer in front from Bought Before Lunch. Then in behind is Fact of the Matter and Compadre. Ligon Rock given time to recover following that error just being pushed along by Tom O'Brien and then comes Tribesman's Glory who's about six seven lengths off the pace. So making their way around the turn and heading to the back straight. They've still got seven left to jump in this Western Park Cancer Charity Handicap Chase. The composer out in front enjoying himself from Bought Before Lunch in second. Then comes Fact of the Matter on the inside of Compadre. Trisman's Glory and Ligon Rock really looks uh, very reluctant now at the back of the field. So heading down the far side. The composer again in front from Bought Before Lunch in second. Fact of the Matter on the inside of Compadre who's travelling okay. Then comes Trisman's Glory and the struggling Ligon Rock is losing ground quite swiftly now at the back of the field. They jump the next. Still travelling well, the composer, and now under pressure, bought before lunch to try and stay with him. Out wider, Trisman's Glory is improving as they jump the next fence down the back straight. Trisman's Glory into third place. Ligon Rock again made a bad error at the back, and I think he's about to call it a day under Tom O'Brien. The final open ditch is four out. Again, the composer is over well from bought before lunch in second. Chased by Trisman's Glory. Fact of the matter, Compadre and Ligon Rock has been pulled up.
So a long run towards the home straight, and still the composer is going well. Has a lead of around three lengths to Bort before lunch, who's trying to latch on in second place. Then comes Trisman's Glory, who's going into unknown stamina territory in third position, trying to latch on to the front pair, just being pushed along to do so. Followed by Fact of the Matter in fourth, and Compadre now is losing touch very, very quickly as they make their way towards the final three fences. So the composer, who's so far given a bold sight to his rivals, still leads by five lengths to Bort before lunch in second. Heading towards three out. The composer gets over okay in a fashion. Still five lengths clear from Bought Before Lunch and Trisman's Glory. Then comes Fact of the Matter as Compadre's been pulled up. Heading towards two out. And the composer comes towards it. He's over. Still has a five, six length advantage to Bought Before Lunch. In second, we've lost Trisman's Glory at the second last. Then Fact of the Matter, who's plugging away in third. Heading to the final fence. Then it's the composer. He's clear. He's over by about six lengths from Bought Before Lunch in second. Then comes Fact of the Matter, racing up towards the line. The composer, he on the whole, has jumped really nicely on his second chasing style. And it's a double for the John... Market in play. Five three five handicap stakes going keenly is Red Glory in the light blue and red colours early on. The favourites is Handy Spy Legend on the outer, the light blue and white colours. Also prominent in the black is Hafez, the grey cap on the inside. Hafez just leading to Red Glory and then Spy Legend. Four wide is Dual Identity on the move in the dark blue. Just behind them then in the green colours is Twilight Twist on the inside. Racing head of Mickey D who's in a maroon jacket. That's racing in company with 2-2 two, two time on the inside, the blue cap. Behind those, we have in maroon and black, Eagle Springs. That one's inside, and it's Maketh Believeth in light blue with the white cap. Followed by New Day in the blue colours, and the bat marker after an awkward start was Heath Rise as they race across the top of the track. So they're being led still by Hafez, and on the outside, Dual Identity. Behind those in third place, we have Red Glory. Then comes Spy Legend out a bit wider. To the inside, the green of Twilight Twist is racing ahead of 2-2 time. And then behind those, we have Mickey D. Eagle Springs is next. And then to the inside, Maketh Believeth, just chased along by Luke Morris. Oakley, Oakley. Next in the field as they continue their journey. And then now reach the top of the hill. They have five furlongs left to travel. It's Hafez, the noseband on the inside by a half length to, in second place, Dual Identity. The favourites being ridden along, Spy Legend on the outside in a share of third with the improving Twilight Twist. And then comes... One that's lost ground, Red Glory, followed by 2-2 two, two Time, just got caught on heels around the turn. Then Mickey D was further back with Eagle Springs no! and Maketh Believeth. But up front on the outside, Dual Identity is trying to come and challenge her fares at the head of affairs. They're now clear of back in third place, Twilight Twist. Spy Legend didn't really handle the turn, is under pressure and dropping away. As up front, it's still her fares towards the inside who leads to Dual Identity as they head down now for the final two and a half furlongs. So her fares over on that far rail. There's a decent break here for Sylvester. I'm out of here, man. About four lengths ahead. Head to the outside beginning to stay on now we have making up some ground mickey d into second place trying to run on but it's her fares who still leads them down to the final furlong her fares in front by a couple of lengths as they race for the final 150 yards her fares is trying to hang on still has this good lead over mickey d who's trying to close in second but her fares in front for sylvester all the time though to the outside getting closer is mickey d and mickey d is getting up for thor hammer hansen mickey d tips out poor old and market suspended market in play in the center in the maroon and pink diamonds just half rearing from the stalls mr orange in the cheek pieces is dropped out towards the rear of the field and in the nose bank quana leads them through the first furlong of this northern commercials handicap round the island in a red cap is close up and out wide breaking records the green and yellow Helvetian spotted jacket with a striped cap tracks them. Vanitas in the dark blue and pink has got a good position on the inside as they run down into the dip before climbing towards halfway. Quana the nose band narrowly to breaking records. Vanitas on the inner to round the island, the red cap and Helvetian out wide. Then Impeller against the Oakley, Oakley. spotted cap midfield to last day pushed along from Mr. Orange and Aliento. Hurstwood and Ice Age and Shakabur and two cop boppies last of all as they swing inside the last quarter of mile. Don't! Up ahead, it's still Quanar leading up. Kicks a couple ends clear. Vanitas in the blue and pink is giving chase. Impeller's going for a run up the fence with the white sleeves. And as they come now, down on towards the last corner. I'm out of here, man. Beyond it, Vanitas who strikes on for home here. Impeller's running on out wide. Round the island begins to stay on stoutly. And then Quanar, Vanitas, Impeller.
Impella and round the island are still closing. Vanitas all out. Impella with a thrust. It's close between Vanitas Market and Impella suspended. on the side. Round the island right behind him in third. And then Quana, Shakabua, Aliento and Mr. Orange. It'll go to the judge. He's out. Novices, Ma Market hurdle. in play. Not fights to be jumped heading towards the first of those. And uh, Master Artist being ridden handily in the orange sleeves and cap as they get over flight number one. Hard Toffee very slow at the back of the field as they head towards flight number two. Dolly McQueen on the inside of Master Artist. First start for the Henry Oliver team. The guns for hire with a white face in third place as they jump. The next Hard Toffee has barely got over the first two. Looks in does not look keen at all at the moment and is tailed right off. Out wider twice the mustard with towards that one's inside buckskin in the maroon and blue silks also towards the rail is number one sun in the light blue colors with the star just behind out by six the nose banded runner then we have ingenuity in the yellow and blue check jacket at the back of this group and a long gap back to hard toffee so quite a long run then towards flight number three and dolly mcqueen who's down in trip today for the fergal o'brien team leads under liam harrison to in second place master artist who's had that one win at cork so carries the penalty First start for Henry Oliver and catch 22 today. In third place is Guns for Hire, who's up on the rail and the pink stars on the sleeves alongside Out by Six, who's been quite keen through the first part of the race. Uh, then in behind that, we have number one Sun, who's up on the rail, chased through by Ingenuity alongside Buckskin and Shane Quinlan. Out wider is Twice the Mustard and still continuing, but 15 lengths behind them, Hard Toffee, who's just giving ground away at every flight of hurdles. Heading towards flight number four, so Dolly McQueen is in front. Good jump by the leader as the initial group go over. And again, Hard Toffee virtually refused. And I think the jockey's had enough already, Fergus Gregory. So Hard Toffee is being pulled up at the back of the field with a circuit to race. So the other runners are pretty well grouped up. And in front, Dolly McQueen with Master Artist half a length down in second place. Then comes Guns for Hire on the inside of Out by Six who's in fourth position. Out wider is Twice the Mustard, who's alongside Ingenuity. And number one son, Daryl Jacob, hugs the rail. They're followed by Buckskin as they head down the back. Oggly, doggly. So the eight that continue are separated by about six lengths, and they still have five flights of hurdles to jump. Dolly McQueen, Liam Harrison in front then from Master Artist and Ben Godfrey in second. Runs that little bit wider on the course as they take the first flight down the far side. The page is accelerating again. The front two have opened up by three lengths to out by six on the outside of Guns for Hire. Then comes number one Sun, who's alongside Ingenuity as they clear the next flight. Buckskin on the inside of the ridden along twice the mustard. Heading to the final flight down the back straight. This is three out. Dolly McQueen and Master Artist. Oh, bad error there by Dolly McQueen. Liam Harrison did well to recover. Oh! But has just surrendered the advantage to Master Artist now. Then in behind Guns for Hire, who's trying to close up. Number one, Sun's on the inside of Out by Six. Then comes Ingenuity, clear of Buckskin and Twice the Mustard. So Master Artist goes on now. Chased by Guns for Hire in second. Dolly McQueen given time to recover after that mistake in third place. Then comes number one Sun, who's now being pushed along. Ingenuity's trying to make up a little bit of ground towards the inside of Out by Six, who looks to be really struggling now. Then comes Buckskin and Twice the Mustard. Master Artist has gone for it a long way out here. Leads by three to four. I'm out of here, man. Guns for Hire in second place. Then comes number one Sun in third, followed by Dolly McQueen and Ingenuity as they head towards two out. The leader fiddled over. Master Artist leads by about five lengths, so Guns for Hire trying to close the gap in second. These two are a long way clear, but the leader still has a big lead. Master Artist by six lengths, heading towards the final flight from Guns for Hire, who can't close the gap at the moment in second place. Then comes Dolly McQueen, who's plugging away the one pace. Master Artist comes to the final flight under Ben Godfrey and meets it well. Clear by six or seven lengths. Novice stakes. Let's see where they're, they're going to head this time towards the... Centre to stand side of the looks of things. Up there early is Lucky Shake and also showing blistering speed is Kotai Beauty, the favourite in dark blue to lead up. Kotai Beauty will bag the rails, dark blue colours. Also showing pace is Josie's Kid from a low draw, the light blue. is racing a share of second with Samhar in grey colours. Winter Siege is next, far side beige with a dark blue cap. Then pushed along is Sidcott Swat. It further back, Lucky Shake, the red and white on the cap. Behind those we have Oggly Doggly, Doggly. who's in behind runners. Towards the stand side is National Star, but up front coming to challenge now Josie's Kid in the 
centre towards the stand side is Kotai Beauty. They're inside the double oh! furlong and a half already, and it is still Kotai Beauty with a good lead. She's got the rails for William Bjork. She's powering away at the moment to in second place. Josie's kid is giving chase. Lucky shot. I'm out of here, man. Third, but it's Kotai Beauty who's clear by a good four lengths, and Kotai Beauty will get off the mark at the second attempt. 48 for the season now for William Buick. Kotai Beauty wins. Josie's kid. Oh, they're off. Mar market in play. Race over a mile and a half this time with a nose banded smart boyo dropped in at the rear end of the field. And among those prominent, Lock Long, the yellow cap, the grey Karagillahi against the fence is prominent. And so too chipping away in the light blue and white silks. And they just about round out the leading trio through the first quarter of a mile with Luna Shadow, white jacket with the green striped sleeves, a couple of lengths off the lead. And the white face Philly Tropical Cyclone settles in mid division against the row with Northern Cracker, the red cap wider out. And then Temple Lock in an orange jacket to Smart Boyo and the Vegas Raider in the Midland Park silks. The light blue and orange is the early back marker as they travel towards the far corner and the mile point. And it's Lock Long. And Tom Eves dictating here, leading by a length and a half to chipping away. A similar margin to Cara Gillahy, who races keenly under restraint in third, just ahead of Luna Shadow in fourth. And then Northern Cracker to Tropical Cyclone. Temple Lock in orange jacket racing wide of Smart Boyo, the shades of blue, and the Vegas Raider continues to look on as they go into the turn at the halfway point. The six or seven lengths covering the field, and Lock Long just swinging along in front. Still with his length and a half advantage over chipping away. And they run uphill and down Dale fairly shortly, running towards the five marker. Doggly, doggly. From chipping away. The grey Caragilla, he travels strongly in behind. Now, midfield tropical cyclones being bustled along against the fence. And Smart Boyo has dropped to last of all, is being firmly ridden and is not striding out with much purpose. And they're heading for the last half mile, running down into the dip. Lock long to chipping away. Caragilla, he the grey. Luna Shadow, the stripes, leaves reminders out wide for Northern Cracker. Then Tropical Cyclone in a silver jacket, the Vegas Raider in the pearl blue. Don't! up to try and close as they begin the climb for home. Uh, Temple Lock in the orange silk struggling and Smart Boyos last of all. And as they begin their swing, Cara Gilla, he has breezed to the front here and goes on with Tropical Cyclone responding to pressure. The Philly now giving chase. The Vegas Raider in the pearl blue has stayed on into third as they climb for the last furlong and a half. The grey head of Cara Gilla, he in front and now really beginning to... I'm out of here, man. Reaching on, powering clear. It's gone three, four lengths ahead of Tropical Cyclone. They're coming home at wide margins in behind, and Cara Gillahy continues. It and in play. Furlongs. Dave and Bernie, who was in isolation, has gone off into the lead by a good two or three lengths, heading towards the first of 11 flights of hurdles. Miss Farage in behind with Geralamo Cardano. And in behind is Dan de Ruban without wider breaking waves. And widest of all, Phoebus Lescrabar as they clear flight number one. Tazar the bat marker, but... There's only about five lengths separating the seven runners as they have two circuits in front of them. Dave and Bernie leads by about a length to in second place, Gerolamo Cardano in those red sleeves. Then breaking waves and the striped jacket out slightly wider. Phoebus Lescrabar, a winner here last time. Widest of all in the orange cap is Lorcan Murta alongside Dame de Ruban. The Thomas Dowson up on the rail is Miss Farage in the green and yellow colours and Nico de Boinville and the bat marker is Tazar and Jamie Hamilton as they head then towards flight number two and racing towards the back straight for the first time. David Burney going on under Gavin Sheehan, leads by a length and a half to in second place, Gerolamo Cardano. Then out wider is Breaking Waves under Daryl Jacob with the noseband being tracked through by Phoebus Lescrabar, who's alongside Dam de Ruban. Then up on the inside is Miss Farage. Shaken up there just for a stride or two was Gerolamo Cardano heading towards the middle flight down the back straight. Tazar is the bat marker on the inside as they clear flight number three. All took that well. Also getting a little bit lower in the saddle is Nico de Boinville or Miss Farage, who's not looked that comfortable through the early stages. Heading over the next flight, Dave and Bernie jumped it well, breaking waves out wider with Gerolamo Cardano in between. Up on the inside, just squeezing away on Miss Farage, Nico de Boinville without wider Phoebus Lescrabar. Then in behind that is Dan de Ruban and Tazar. As the tightly grouped field will take a left-handed turn away from the back straight. Dave and Bernie narrowly in front from Gerolamo Cardano and Keelan Woods in second, followed by Breaking Waves in third. Daryl Jacob just having a look over both shoulders. Then towards the rail is Miss Farage. 
Maybe settling into a bit more of a rhythm now, followed by Phoebus Lescrabar, who's back up in distance today, followed by Tazar and uh, Dam de Ruban, who's held up today, has in the past been prominent in her races, but today she's switched off out the back as they head down towards the next flight. So the seven runners all cleared that one well again. Dave and Bernie up by that rail with, for company, Gerolamo Cardano as they make their way towards the next flight. And in behind is Miss Farage, very much with her ears pricked on the far side. Then towards the near side, Breaking Waves, being followed through by Phoebus Lescrabar. And then down to Ruban and Tazar. The back oggly, is oggly. Very much in touch as they jump the next. Good jump by the leader, Dave and Bernie. Goes on by a length still to Breaking Waves. Gerolamo Cardano got a reminder there. Then in behind is Phoebus Lescrabar with the scrubbed along Miss Farage. Then in behind that is Dam de Ruban and at the back, but still travelling well enough, is Tazar as they race out onto their final circuit in this Doug Clark Memorial Race Handicap Hurdle. Dave and Bernie just stretching on a little bit now with Breaking Waves half a length down in second. Then comes Gerolamo Cardano. Phoebus Lescrabar comes next. Very much hard work for Nico de Boinville on Miss Farage. Scrubbing away on the inside of Dam de Ruban and Tazar at the back, still under Jamie Hamilton as they head down the back straight with five flights of hurdles left to jump. So the pace definitely increased around that bend and Dave and Bernie and Breaking Waves are the front two. Gerolamo Cardano is about four lengths down, being pushed along in third position. Out no! with Phoebus Lescrabar just edging a little bit closer now. Miss Farage looking far from straightforward on the inside of Tazar. Dam de Ruban just trying to improve a little bit as well as they jump the middle flight down the back straight. Dave and Bernie and Breaking Waves in front. Gerolamo Cardano trying to latch back on out wider Phoebus Lescrabar. Then comes Dam de Ruban and Tazar and Miss Farage is really toiling in behind them as they clear the final flight down the far side. So still in front, Dave and Bernie with breaking waves for company. In behind, Gerolamo Cardano being ridden along but still in touch. Tazar's making headway. Phoebus Lescrabar just on the outside of Dam de Ruban. Both those just being pushed along and they're a long way clear of Miss Farage. Dave and Bernie then with upsides breaking waves. Still in touch, Gerolamo Cardano. I'm out of here, man. Made pretty eye-catching headway. Only a length and a half down and has moved from last place for a share of third. Now they're clear of Dam de Ruban, who comes next. And then comes Phoebus Lescrabar as they turn for home. Breaking waves and Dave and Bernie there with Tazar trying to follow breaking waves, who's starting to move into a fractional advantage. Then in behind is Gerolamo Cardano clear of Dam de Ruban as they now clear two out and breaking waves has gone for home. Dave and Bernie under under pressure. Tazar now under strong pressure. They're clear now of Gerolamo Cardano. Long run to the final flight, but Breaking Waves has a good lead. Breaking Waves being chased by Tazar. On five, handicap. Lethal Blast began really quickly. Wants to come across and get the rails, and I think we'll be allowed to do so ahead of Faustus and Agent Shiftwell, second and third. Behind those in fourth place then is Shining as they race through the first couple of furlongs. So Lethal Blast in front to Agent Shiftwell, the red and pink. Faustus, yellow and brown in third position. Then comes Shining, dark blue. Towards the right, stake acclaim, yellow and green. Airman is next in the blue cap, and the bat marker ridden along is red alert. Oggly, oggly. Blast it is, though, is really pouring it on up front, leading by a length. So Agent Shiftwell in second place. Then comes Faustus, Airman starts to try and pick up but lethal blast the one to catch oh! as they head down for the final furlong faustus now giving chase for william buick in second and he's making ground two but up front lethal blast still has the lead to faustus I'm out of here, man. His air man lethal blast drifting off the fence faustus beginning to get up for buick now and it's all the in play the colville in the black and pink was out fairly sharply but so too gives a sub in the sheepskin noseband and he probably just about has the advantage through the first furlong to mr colville Sam Maximus with a white blaze is tracking the leading pair and alongside him the uh, Philly hello my darling in the white jacket dashing rat in the emerald green is last of the quintet as they complete a couple of furlongs so gives a sub leading them as they run down into the dip before the ascent to halfway Mr Colville racing close up in second Sam Maximus the striped sleeves tracks them then hello my darling and dashing rat remains at the table Oakley, Oakley. Heading now towards the last two and a half furlongs. The swing for home. Giza Sub still rolling along happily in front, it would see. Mr. Colville chased along. Sam Maximus at this stage no! is in a bit of a pocket. He's rather hemmed in. Hello, my darling, on the extreme left, fanning wide. Dashing Rat is last of all. Furlong and a half to go. Giza Sub in front. Now Sam Maximus, the strong. I'm out of here, man. Daylight, but he's just lugging in behind. Hello, my darling, is running on strongly down the near side. Giza Sub with a half furlong to cover. Hello, my darling wearing away at the deficit gives a sub game hello my darling inching closer gives a sub driven out wins all makes all market suspended novices handicap hurdle
this time they'll jump 13 flights of hurdles heading towards the first of those flights, which they've all got over safely. And Dreams Under My Feet is prominent early on, as is Bob Pebble the Grey, and also Shibuffy, out widest of all, in the yellow jacket striped sleeves, just about edging into a narrow lead now. In fourth position is Sense of Adventure on the outside of Getaway Bay, who hugs the rail. Then comes Mr Cuddles, followed by the nose-bounded Bally Milan, and the bat marker is Big Tree as they race around this bend for the first time and heading towards the home straight in flights two and three. Shibuffy and Ross Chapman going on from last week's sits in a prominent second position. Then in behind is Bob Pebble in third, the grey. With in behind that, we have Getaway Bay, who finished in front of Bob Pebble at Utoxeter last time. They are in third and fourth positions. Then comes Sense of Adventure in the black and pink colours. The red and white on the far side is Mr Cuddles and Keelan Woods with the cheek pieces. The other red and white with the nose band, Bally Milan. And out slightly wider in the blue and yellow is Big Tree. And Daryl Jacob, who won our previous race, heading down towards flight number three. Dreams Under My Feet taking over. Shibuffy wasn't quite as fluent as the leader. Then in behind is Getaway Bay, who's alongside Bob Pebble. Then Sense of Adventure with Sk uh, Mr Cuddles on the inside, out slightly wider, Big Tree, and the bat marker is Bally Milan. But there's still two circuits in front of them, a long way to go. And uh, leading is Dreams Under My Feet for James Best by half a length. To Shibuffy in second place, then comes Getaway Bay. Out slightly wider, Bob Pebble. Then three running together. Up on the rail is Mr Cuddles alongside Sense of Adventure. Widest of all is Big Tree. And the back is still Bally Milan, patiently ridden by Sam Twiston Davis. His one ride here today as they make their way down the back straight and heading to three flights of hurdles down the far side. Flight number four is on the approach. Dreams Under My Feet and Shibuffy. About a length between them. Dreams Under My Feet is over. Up in trip today. Having won over two and a half miles here just seven days ago. Out wider, Bob Pebble. Then in behind is Getaway Bay alongside Sense of Adventure. Mr Cuddles towards the inside. Big tree out wider of Bally Milan as they continue down towards the next flight. This is flight number six. Heading towards it, Dreams Under My Feet, shortened up but got over in a fashion. From in second place is Shabuffy, and then in behind that is Getaway Bay with out wider Bob Pebble. Sense of Adventure comes next with Mr Cuddles on the inside. Then Big Tree up on the outside of Bally Milan as they take a left-handed turn out of the back straight, long run towards the next flight, that which will be flight number seven. So still in front is Dreams Under My Feet and James Best now has a lead of around three lengths to Shabuffy in second spot, giving chase after this leader. Getaway Bay, the Utoxeter winner, is in third alongside Bob Pebble. Then comes Sense of Adventure. Mr. Cuddles is up on the inside of Bally Milan and out a little bit wider. Oggly doggly. Big tree as they head down towards the next two flights down the home straight. So dreams under my feet in front by a couple of lengths to Shibuffy in second place. A little bit awkward there was Bob Pebble, who uh, wasn't quite as quick in the air as some of the others. Getaway Bay comes next. Reminders for Mr. Cuddles just running lazily towards that far side in behind Getaway Bay with Sense of Adventure. Then in behind is Bally Milan, who's up in trip today, and out wider is Big Tree. Over the next flight, and again just fiddling over the leader. Dreams under my feet, but still has a good lead here of three to four lengths, but still a circuit to last out to in second place Getaway Bay. Then in third is Bob Pebble on the outside of Shibuffy. Mr. Cuddles on the inside of Sense of Adventure. Bally Milan is at the back still with Big Tree. So heading out onto their final circuit. Dreams under my feet. The lead is around four or five lengths. Two in second place, Getaway Bay. Then out slightly wider is Bob Pebble. Shibuffy is quickly losing places. Big Tree just being down for a few strides out wider of Sense of Adventure. Mr. Cuddles on the inside with Bally Milan. As the lead has gone six lengths in front down the back straight. So Dreams under my feet is... Uh, Moving along with plenty of menace at the moment. To in second place, Getaway Bay, who's now in a clear second position. Four lengths ahead of the pack. With Sense of Adventure on the inside of Bob Pebble. Towards the inside, Mr Cuddles. Bally Milan in behind with Big Tree. Shabuffy is about to pull up over the next. 
and Dreams Under My Feet. It seems trying to steal this now. James Best down the back straight, six or seven lengths in front. Final flight down the far side is three out. Again is over with an eight length advantage to Getaway Bay in second place. Then comes Sense of Adventure in third, ridden along Mr. Cuddles. Bally Milan's got lots to do. So is Big Tree. Bob Pebbles drops away very tamely. So Dreams Under My Feet still travels strongly, leads by eight lengths to in second place is Getaway. I'm out of here, man. Adventure comes next in third, trying to close the gap on the second and is doing so. They're clear of Mr. Cuddles, Bally Milan, and then comes Big Tree, but still travelling very strongly, Dreams Under My Feet, heading around the final turn with a 12-length advantage. Dreams Under My Feet and James Best then, con looking to continue this... Ex They're off. Mark the free tips market the race is in play. Handicap stakes. A bit slowly into stride was after party, just chased along early on, and also Colonel Whitehead rather missed the kick with his white face as they raced for the first furlong. Love Powerful broke well, blue and white colours towards the stand side. Stable companion Citizen Surge is up there too in the light blue, just off of his be prepared in the grey and maroon stripes towards the right hand side. That street kid in the cheek piece is also cheek pieced, is Hieronymus in black and pink colours, and then comes Mark Spare in the green silks. A gap back to after party, black and white and Chased along at the back, really outpaced his Colonel Whitehead as they head down towards halfway and past it. Towards the stand side now, Be Prepared has come across the lead for Kieran O'Neill. Tackled towards the far side by Street Kid. Oh, glee, oh, glee. Powerful is now shaken up. Mark Spare is just in behind them as they head down for the final quarter mile. Be Prepared in front to Mark Spare, Street Kid. Citizen Surge, Love Powerful. Then Hieronymus after party with a lot to do. Be Prepared is drifting. Down off the rails towards the centre. Tackled again by Mark Spare. Stand side, Citizen Surge is keeping on well towards... Slow to Market slow, slow to in play. Out wide, bustled along in the red and white, and through the first furlongs of this Napoleon's Casino Bradford Phillies handicap, it is the favourite Al Simo in the dark blue and white who leads to Penny Pot Lane in a red jacket tracking the leaders. Jill Rose in the sheepskin noseband is handy. The grey Aramis Grey has recovered from a sluggish start to race in touch. The blue bar in fifth at the end of a quarter mile in the pink and blue, and Alice Starr is last of a well grouped field ascending to the halfway point. Al Simo in front here, leading by around about a length. Jill Rose sitting at her quarters, Penny Pot. Oh, Glee, no, Glee. Aramis Gray just being gently hustled along in fourth. The Blue Bar in fifth, waiting in the wings. It's hard work for Alice Starr at the back of the field. And Al Simo leads him into the straight inside the two, climbing for home now. Al Simo kicking on off the last part of the bend. Can she fend off the chasers? Penny Pot Lane up the end of the Gray. Aramis Gray in the clear. I'm out of here, man. The Blue Bar has pulled widest of all. Al Simo in front with a half furlong to cover. Aramis Gray is still staying on. Penny Pot Lane up the inner Al Simo it's getting a bit desperate but she's going to make all and win again and she's there now rearing was Nozier as they're off and racing in play. Rearing, just before the gates open that they are away over seven furlongs showing speed towards the centre is for sure in black and yellow colours with the grey alpine springs the blue and yellow that's Clo Holteen just in behind them on the extreme right Showing speed to his Ruby 40 and then just behind towards the stand side is by the bay in green and yellow colours. Followed by 6 till 12 in the white, red and blue. And then comes Clagan, the orange sleeves and cap from behind that runner is Rita the Cheetah in the pink colours with the grey cap. Under pressure is the grey horse Woodcock at the back and Nozieras who blew the start is the bat marker. So up front, stand side rails, Alpine Springs, a narrow lead. So on the far side, Ruby 40. Just in behind them is By the Bay moving quite well. Then comes Clo Holteen trying to get into it. The blue and Ogly, yellow Ogly. Kelly as they pass the three furlong from home marker. Alpine Springs has the lead. Hard up against the stand side rails. Clo Holteen is trying to challenge. In between them is By the Bay trying to pick up as well as they head down inside the two. Meanwhile, a bit closer is 6 till 12 towards the stand side rails too. 6 till 12 is now coming through against the rails for William Buick and has struck the front and 6 till 12. Has opened up with a furlong to go and has gone away. I'm out of here, man. Six ahead from the back, trying to stay on his Rita the Cheetah, but six till twelve is away and gone. Five lengths ahead now to insert, and then comes by the bay and Clagan. It will be fifty up for the season for William Buick. A treble on the day. Six till twelve. Over a mile, and the nose banded Oslo had to be bustled up, leaving the stalls. Harswell Duke against the fence away brightly and helps to share the early running with a mean, similar coloured runners, a mean one off the rail. And then Delgray Boy, the world wag favourite, yellow jacket for Dave Allen, racing keenly just behind the leading pair, shadowed into the turn by 
Oslo's in the black and yellow. And then Lord Nadine in the pale blue racing on the inner of Frank Kellio, the previous course and distance winner in the blue and pink silks. So travelling along the side of the course and running towards the five marker, and it's Haswell Duke leading by a little over a length to Amin. Del Grey Boy poised against the rail just ahead of Oslo. Lord Nadine in the light blue waiting in the wing, shadowed by Frank Kellio as they run down into the dip and through the halfway points. So Haswell Duke and Danny Tudhope set up here. Amin is a close second, Oslo wide. Del Grey Boy up the inner, covered up at this stage and working back to Frank Kellio and Lord Nadine. And it's a well-grouped field as they climb inside the last three furlongs. So making the swing back towards home. No! Well, Duke, Tud Hope just quickening the tempo, but Del Grey Boy's now moving out after him. Lord Nadine in the pale blue is making headway onto the tails of the leading pair as they swing on in. Head for the last furlong and a half. Haswell Duke against the fence. Del Grey Boy now. I'm out of here, man. Alongside, couple of lengths away. Lord Nadine. Del Grey Boy pokes his nose ahead as they come inside the furlong. Lord Nadine down the near side, the final challenger, and is finishing off strongly, beginning to wear down the deficit. Lord Nadine on the near side, getting up, worrying Del Grey Boy out of it. Lord Nadine. And they're off. Mar market in play. Oh, was a little bit slow for this. Visit at races.com forward slash market movers handicap and also chased along to gather stride. Havana Dawn, the grey. One that broke well was in the cove. Also showing bright speed is Rivers Lad, who's going to head across towards the stand side rails in the white colours. In the orange, that's pure perfection upsides. Just off them is Vitaline. And the pink sleeves and cap further back to find Tane Matt in blue towards the right. Just skips over the path there. Further back to find the favourite, Magical Mile. Quite far back at this stage is in behind on the rails in the blue. That's Winkleman with the white stars. And this favourite's only got one behind. It's been chased along as well by Sylvester. Meanwhile, back with the leaders. Orange colours, pure perfection has now got alongside on the rails. Rivers Lad, these two at the head. Oakley, of the under pressure, Magical Mile at the moment, going nowhere fast as they head down now for the final three furlongs. So pure perfection is moving alongside Rivers Lad. These two and behind them is in the cove trying to pick up. Also mind that jet no! the rail run in red colours. Just in behind them the noseband Vitaline is picking up two for Holly Doyle and here comes Vitaline now to strike the front with the sheepskin noseband. Trying to fight back is Rivers Lad but it's Vitaline in front. I'm out of here man. To go. Holly Doyle has Vitaline in front and now stretching on by a length and a half to Rivers Lad. Pagan in the purple jacket jumping out out wide. Trying to work into a position behind Bano in the yellow and black spots, who's prominent with a nose bound in Macho Pride, the grey Vero Eagle handy on the inside. Running Wild is pulling hard, running wild and free in the base, so it's just behind them and uh, rather compromising the chance of the thin blue line, pushing him out wide. He looks a bit awkward running wild. Pagan is held up and at the back of the field, Etu Brute, as they climb towards halfway. So it's Bano against the fence. To Macho Pride, the noseband, Vero Eagle on the inner, Pagan in a purple jacket, running wild deepest of all. Oakley, Oakley. The thin blue line in the pearl blue chased along and Etu Brute, the back of the field, and again running wild, looks awkward on the bend, inside the two. Etu Brute then first in line for home to Macho no! Pride. Here's Pagan on the left, purple jacket delivering his challenge. Vero Eagle, the greys, caught in a bit of a pocket, on towards the last furlong. Macho Pride in the noseband has hit the front. Pagan I'm out of here, man. On the near side, Vero Eagle trying to thread the eye of the needle and then Bano Pagan now comes alongside Macho Pride in she's on driven out by Fallon Pagan getting home strong right marker early on Bagatelle the first one to show and Vega up there as well towards the inside and Secret Shadows nice and handy as well with the striped cap joined now by Nikolaeva on the wide outside in the white and maroon silks they head towards the intersection with New Heights racing only just in behind these leaders as well then Eltham Palace, another one held up. Born to Please, still to the rear with Cafe Sydney and Lady Argento is the back marker. They cross the track then through the intersection, now on towards the loop. And up front in this Get Hugh Taylor's Tips on AtTheRaces.com, Philly's Handicap. En Vega now just eases to the front. En Vega has got Bagatelle, Secret Shadow and Nikolaeva all right there, line across the track. Two, three and four. In fifth is New Heights. New Heights is followed by Eltham Palace and Grace McEntee. Cafe Sydney next in the field, followed then by Lady Argento, who has just nosed past Born to Please at the back end of the field. So steady away around this tightest part of the turn and moving now back right-handed towards the home straight. 
So it is Envega and Secret Shadow. Oakley, Oakley. Excuses from here. Should be plain sailing for them here. Uh, for the final five furlongs of the contest with Bagatelle and New Heights behind them in three and four. Then Nikolai Ava, who's just being nudged along, having been handy earlier in the race. Cafe Sydney comes next, followed then by Born to Please and Elton Palace, who are both in behind Bagatelle, who's now ridden along. Lady Argento to the wide outside is still last. No! And of the two leaders, Secret Shadow appears to be going better now than in Vega. Behind those is New Heights. Then Nikolai Ava, Eltham Palace trying to stay on, followed by Bagatelle. Hard to see any of the others getting involved. Secret Shadow is now trying to turn a few screws here. Is this to be her night? Secret Shadow and Ishin Murphy clear from Nikolai Ava, who's trying to rally in the middle of the track. I'm out of here, man. And staying on his new heights, and Vega has dropped tamely away. Born to please, making only... Play. Fifth ...wedding anniversary handicap. Thornton Care often a little slow to gather his stride, but he didn't break too badly down on the inner in the noseband and cheek pieces. And Jemiah, with a yellow cap, is the early leader as they go into their first turn. With Thornton Care against the rail adopting a prominent position, moving through to press for the lead. Point of honour in the raw blue is a close third. And then Dance King, the green jacket for Emily Easterby in fourth. The head of Dragons will rise in the black and mauve. Possible ambition, red cap for Alison Daniel last but one. And Bon Vitesse under Amy Woth. At the back of the field in the Jeff and Sandra Turnbull silks, the dark blue and pink. So heading towards the turn at the six marker. And it's just about Jemaya to Thornton Care. Point of honour a little wider out, just shading third. Dance King against the red and then working across to Dragons Will Rise and Possible Ambition, the red cap. And a couple of lengths away to uh, Bon Vitesse. Well grouped. As they approach the halfway point, uh, nose banded point of honour on the outer, coming to apply a bit of pressure to both Jemaya and Thornton Care, who races against the rail. Dragons will rise the Oakley, Oakley. close up with possible ambition and Dance King tucked away against the fence. Bon Vitesse continues to look on. Running downhill now towards the last half mile. Still just about Jemaya, yellow cap, but only by a whisker at a point of honour. Thornton Care close up in third. Possible ambition, the red cap inching a bit closer. Uh, Dragons will rise in. No! Dance King covered up against the rail in the emerald green and at the back of the field. Bon Vitesse and they're climbing for home now and heading towards the last quarter mile. Jemaya with Thornton Care up the inner now coming right alongside. Possible ambition, the red cap has been angled out. Bon Vitesse still in rear is going to have to come round the whole field. Dance King will need to explain. I'm out of here, man. The green jacket might go for the same gap as Dragons will rise. Thornton Care in front as they head for the last furlong here to Jemaya. Dragons will rise coming between them to mount a challenge dance king boxing on at the one pace bon vitesse running on late in the piece but two lays thornton care being challenged by dragons will rise who's wearing away at thornton care and getting up under becky smith dragon the first race market of the night, in play slow into stride and bustled up to gather speed mcmerry jim Maximum Risk doing it more easily on the inside of God of Dreams, and they dispute the lead early on with Desert Dream racing in third place. Just behind the leaders in the dark nose band is written broadcast on the outside of McMerry Jim, who's made ground now to track the leaders on the rails. Irish Eileen in the sash races just ahead of Legenda. And then behind these, we have Oriental Lily as the field begin to space out. Macken on the inside of Clotherholm, and last of all is Glen Gary. Maximum Risk already at the half mile point has the lead by just about a length or so from god of dreams as they straighten desert dream is in third place within fourth place mcmerry jim and written broadcast in fifth ugly ugly these irish eileen oriental lily improving Clotherholm on the outside of the group as the pace just begins to pause and they bunch up on the wide outside glen gary is pulled towards the center and we have two and a half furlongs to go god of dreams matching no! sides with maximum risk now not much room for mcmerry jim amongst horses desert dream begins a challenge being gathered together is written broadcast with oriental lily as they make their way with a furlong to go god of dreams I'm out of here, man. trying to join in mcmerry jim still battling there on the inside always been there is maximum risk down the outside oriental lily stays on maximum risk finding plenty trying hard to fight off Mc Mary Jim, the two of them going for the line together. Maximum risk and on the far side and the near Market. side. Então vamos lá agora aqui para uma pequena análise depois do, do dia do dia que foi o melhor deles todos até agora. Fiz quase três vezes mais do que costumo fazer. Muito à conta deste início aqui, muito bom. 
em que tive aqui quase duas horas em que fiz o dinheiro quase tudo. Um, foi de, de todos, como já disse, de todos foi o melhor. Entrou backs muito bons, entrou backs de 11 euros. Fiz alguns leis, fiz se calhar para aí 10 euros em, em leis, o que também ajudou. Depois vi que, que aqui a partir das 3 e meia, aqui a partir das, 3, das 4 horas praticamente, até quase acabar, parece que ou quebrei ou as corridas não... Eu acho que foi mais eu que quebrei porque senti o dia já feito, senti o dia já feito e, e provavelmente quando é assim mais vale a pena ir embora do que estar aqui no ganho e perde, ganho e perde, ganho e perde, mas pronto, isto como é, na prática é aprendizagem, o que, o que interessa é fazer e fazer e fazer, quanto mais corridas fizer, mais fácil chego, mais depressa chega ao objetivo final. Um, Está aqui, fiz só ontem que consegui fazer 50% da banca, da banca que tinha iniciado, o maior green foi ontem também, aqui consigo ver nas corridas, foram só 18, foi uma média de 1,86 por, por corrida, que é muito bom, Eu, era bem bom que fosse sempre 50% a stake em todas, mais de 50% a stake em todas as corridas, na prática Ontem quase, quase tudo correu bem, tudo o que tocava dava dinheiro, mas pronto, foi, consegui bater a meta, a meta do, consegui bater a meta dos, do segundo patamar, de, dos 30 aos 80, vou fazer o levantamento, amanhã começo com, com a banca, com o que sobrou, não é? Supostamente a banca inicial era 40, neste quase vai ser 54 porque já tinha, fiz 14 horas a mais do que os 80 e até chegar ao 100 eu vou usar stakes de 4, ver se não me assusto quando perder 4 horas de uma vez só e se não começa a fechar curto, porque muitas vezes eu fecho não com base na percentagem de ganho sobre a stake, mas com o lucro em si, vejo-me a fazer um lucro já tenho de um, um euro por exemplo, ou um terço da stake já vejo com tendência a fechar e agora aqui tenho que começar a habituar-me a fechar com fo a fazer x% da stake e não, e não x de dinheiro, já que a stake vai aumentar, o que quer dizer que quanto mais, se eu continuar a fechar ao mesmo dinheiro, por exemplo a 1 euro, quer dizer que na prática aqui faço 33%, mas aqui irei só fazer 20%, o que a longo prazo pois vai dar, vai dar prejuízo, porque se eu quando perder perco 5%, mas quando ganhar, vou ganhar só um, o rácio ganho, ganho contra a perda vai ser muito melhor, o que não é nada bom. Por isso, dois foi tudo, não há assim grande coisa a acrescentar, correu tudo praticamente bem, claro que há sempre coisas a melhorar, mas nada de muito gritante. Por isso, fiquem bem e até amanhã.